So far, we have been studying the rigid body planar motion using relative motion analysis, which means that we focus on the relative motion of two points that belong to the same rigid body. General plane motion can be considered to be the combination of translation, where the two points have the same linear velocity and linear acceleration, and rotation, when one point's circular motion is centered at the other point. However, some of these problems can also be solved using the absolute motion analysis, and I will demonstrate that through several examples. Before that, let's quickly review the absolute dependent motion analysis that we learned in particle kinematics. If you recall, there are two key steps. We need to set up position variables s along the direction of motion from a fixed point or a fixed datum line. In some examples, we also learned that the positions can be set up with respect to different fixed points or datum lines. Then we need to find the depending relation between the position variables, and from there we can determine the kinematic variables such as velocity and acceleration of one particle from the other. The absolute motion analysis for general plane motion that we will discuss soon follows the same principle as this approach. Let's look at this example. The hydraulic cylinder C extends and causes the collar A to move to the left with constant linear velocity as shown. We need to determine the angular velocity of rod AB when theta equals to 30 degree. At this point, you should already know how to solve this problem using either the relative motion analysis or by applying the instantaneous center of zero velocity. But we will try to solve this problem using the absolute motion analysis instead. We will focus on rod AB and try to set up the linear position of a point that belongs to this rod, as well as the angular position of this rod. Since the linear velocity of point A is given, this will be our point, and its position as A is set from a fixed point, point O. And the angular position of this rod, theta, is naturally set from the horizontal reference line passing through A. And then, just like what we did in the absolute dependent motion analysis for pulley systems, we are going to apply geometry to find the depending relation between the linear position and the angular position that we just set up. From trigonometry, we can easily tell that SA equals to 2 feet multiplied by cosine theta. Then, just like what we did before, we need to take the time derivative of this entire equation. And this is what we get. Recognize that dSA dt is the linear velocity Va, and d theta dt is the angular velocity omega. Since theta equals to 30 degree, Va is a constant 5 feet per second in the opposite direction of SA, we can solve for omega AB. Please pay attention to how the angular velocity of rod AB is solved from the linear velocity of point A because point A's absolute linear position is related to the angular position of the rod. If you compare this method to the other methods we learned before, the advantage is that you can solve for omega AB as a function of angle theta, so you can quickly evaluate omega for any other angles as well. Let's look at this example. If rod AB has a constant angular velocity of 0.5 radian per second counterclockwise, we need to determine the linear velocity of collar C at this instant. Let's first determine the total fixed height from point A vertically to point C. From trigonometry, we can determine H to be 0.8025 meter. Now we need to set up the linear and angular positions, and for that, let's look at a more arbitrary orientation. For convenience, let's set up the angular position of rod AB this way. And the linear position of point C is set up this way. The blue reference line is a fixed datum line. If we first draw this triangle, and then draw this green triangle, by applying the Pythagorean theorem to the green triangle, we get this relation. Notice how it contains both the angular position theta and the linear position SC. We expand it, 
Notice how these two add up to be a constant, 0 0.36. Simplify, the constants don't matter. Then take the time derivative of this entire equation and simplify again. So now using this equation, it's time to evaluate Vc at this current orientation. Based on how we set it up, theta is 30 degree, omega is a given 0 0.5 radian per second, Using trigonometry again, we can solve for SC at this current orientation, and then we can solve for VC. Negative sign indicates the direction of VC is to the left. Let's quickly look at another very similar example, which we also solved before using the relative motion analysis. I included this one just to show you that the different methods would lead to the same answer. In this case, the linear velocity of color C is given, and we need to find the angular velocity of rod AB instead. We have this same relation. The angle is the same 30 degree. VC is 2 meter per second. SC is calculated the same way, and we can solve for omega AB, which is the same answer as what we got before. I want to remind you that the absolute motion analysis method can also be used to calculate linear or angular acceleration for certain problems as well. However, the calculation procedure does get more complicated, and therefore this method might lose its advantage over other methods.